Good morning. Uh, good morning to all that are here. Good morning to all that are um, online and at home. Uh, it, is, it is good uh, to be together this morning, e- even, even if it's virtually. It is good to be together this morning. This is, um, yeah, this is, uh, I feel like um, you would think that the more you do a particular thing, the better at it you get. But I'm not sure, I'll be honest, I'm not sure that's the case now, right now. Uh, but we're we're managing we're doing okay um, and we'll and we'll we'll hang in. So um, bless you wherever you're at, whether you're here or at home. Um, thanks for being here. Um, um, yeah, we'll uh, jump in this morning with this invocation, and then Shri will have some uh, some of the announcements. There's not a whole lot going on, but um, as far as announcements go, but a few things um, to pay attention to. Um, but anyways, hear this invocation. We confess, O Lord, that we become so distracted by the busyness of life that we often fail to pray as we should. Quiet and center our minds today that we may focus our attention wholly on you. Hear our prayers, O God, those we offer for ourselves and for others. Amen. I would contend at this point in time, maybe not even the busyness, but just kind of the craziness of life that gets us moving. So so may it be in these days and in these times that that we find ourselves a little anxious and a little concerned and and kind of running uh, in different directions, trying to hear and understand what is all going on. May, May it be in this day that we find ourselves... Um, leaning all the more into God's story and faithfulness that is indeed at work in this world still yet. That's what we will continue to proclaim, that God is at work, He is at work, He is at work, and we will lean all the more into His work and activity. Amen. Well, good morning. Uh, yes, I, I love I love that, Chris, that he is at work. That's a reminder that I need in this season. Um, I think it's a good reminder for all of us in 2020, for sure, that he is still at work. So I just wanted a couple announcements this morning. Um, continue to pray for Bill Seal. Uh, we were just at his wife's homegoing memorial service yesterday, and it was actually a beautiful celebration knowing where she's at. So continue to pray for him as he walks forward on his own. And we, al- we also continue to pray for Vel. Uh, we were able to go see her again uh, yesterday. And she is requesting that we pray for her energy and strength. Um, that has been one of her prayer requests for this last week. And uh, so, yeah, continue to pray for Vel. We continue to pray for Doug as well. And um, as he's fighting um, some heart issues and some lung issues, and so continue to pray for him as well. Uh, There is a work day that Pastor Chris is going to be scheduling, um, so watch for an email coming out this week. There's a number of things that we need to do around the church grounds, um, including staining, I think, the the playground uh, fencing. So if if you'll just watch for that email coming out um, and pay attention to that, that would be great. And then uh, upcoming, just, uh, it's kind of funny that I'm announcing this, but uh, my ordination is coming up. So <laughs> August 16th is, uh, is going to be at Tower Community Fellowship at 630 in the evening. You are all invited. If you do not want to attend, there will be a link online that you can um, watch online if you would prefer to do that. Oh, are you coming up? Uh, yeah, yeah, just to, just to add to that, I should have uh, added to that, but... We're still working on some details with that, but uh, because it's on a Sunday evening uh, in Aurora, it it it, it would be um, not practical to have a reception afterwards or something like that. So, so what we're looking at is maybe a similar kind of thing that we that we did for um, that we did for Roger and Vicky last week at the park. Um, so it'd be more like a pregame event than post. Um, so, so that's what we're kind of looking at. It's the 16th, so we got two weeks for that. Um, but, but we'll work out the details and make sure everybody knows. But, uh, but we want to make sure that that we all, as a church, are able to uh, celebrate that accomplishment um, 
that, that Cherie has, has worked so hard for um, and to be able to, um, to uh, greet her in that. And um, yeah, so those are, I'll, I'll have more details this week. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's take a moment just to settle our minds and our hearts as we get ready for worship. There's a lot happening in our own church family as well as around the world. I'm sure if you're watching the news like we are, um, there's moments where we wish we could just turn it off and put our head in the sand and not look at all of it. But the king says, I am still at work ahead of you. I am still the prince of peace. I am still the one who is hope. So let's lean into him this morning. Jesus, we come to you with all of these needs, all of these prayer requests, all of the things that are on our minds. And Lord, I ask that you would give us today hope that comes straight from your heart, hope that comes from your very character. Lord, there's a lot happening in this world, but you are still at work. And so we hold on to that today. Your name is the only name that we pay attention to in these days. We want to focus on where you're leading, on your wisdom, on your discernment. So Lord, whether we're here in this building today or at home watching online, I ask that you would infill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would overwhelm us today with your presence, that we would know that you love us and that you see and that you're at work ahead of us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, we pray. Amen. Well, let's worship this morning.
church. Today's reading is from Colossians 1 verses 9 through 14. Since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all your spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, and you bear fruit in every good work as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has en enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Yeah. 
continue um, to worship this morning, spending some time in prayer. Um, Shri had mentioned that there is a lot. Um, and I'm sure many of you feel it. Um, not just those who are uh, battling illness or those who um, have experienced loss, but, but, but maybe, maybe all of us just kind of feeling all the things, right? Um, so let's continue uh, in prayer this morning. Like I said, leaning in all the more uh, to God's work and activity in this life, um, that we would grow aware, that we would grow uh, more and more sensitive uh, to that work. God in heaven, um, I suppose there's moments in this life that um, that maybe we don't see clearly uh, your work. Maybe we we wonder what it is that you're doing. But God is with faith that we declare your work. So even when we find our eyesight unclear, we still, we still believe that you are at work in us, that you are at work amongst us, that you are forever inviting us to your feet, and calling us, challenging us to your way. So God, this morning, I, I confess my struggles lately, the, the weight that I feel, the challenges that are uh, in front of us as a culture and as a people. Uh, but God, in the midst of that strain, I lean in. I lean in your story, I lean in to your grace, I lean in to your love that is at work and being declared in this life. So God, in the midst of challenge, help us. Give us your strength, give us your peace. Make known your presence to us in these days. God, for those who are ill and fighting health concerns, God, I pray your healing over them. I pray, God, that you would reach down into their heart and their soul and their physicality and speak your life and wholeness and healing over them.
And God, for those of us who may not be dealing with physical health concerns, there might be other concerns that we carry. Concerns for those. But also within our heart and our soul, there is probably always something that could use your voice and could use your healing touch. So God, I pray, pray that touch over those who are simply battling the tensions of this life. God, we we declare your presence over us today. And again, God, I ask that we would indeed grow more and sensitive and aware of that presence. God, may your voice be heard this morning. God, would you bless this time? Would you bless our days? Help us to hear you. Amen. Um, Acts chapter 5. We'll start in verse 12. And... um, I was, as I, as I worked through this, I had us, um, Acts chapter 5, 12 through verse 21, trying to um, keep it relatively short, but, the, but really the, the whole rest of Acts chapter 5 is, is really the story together. Uh, the story of, of, of healing, the story of, of God's Spirit at work within the community bringing about healing. Uh, but also the tensions that that brings in the midst of life. There are challenges. Uh, Ultimately, the the challenge in our story is that of lordship. And so so let's see if we can get through this. I'm going to go ahead and read the the entirety from verse 12 to the end. Um, So so hang tight, hear the story, um, and let's... let's, um, Uh, Let's hear what the Lord has to say to us today. So starting in verse 12. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. They would come together regularly at Solomon's porch. No one from outside the church dared join them, even though the people spoke highly of them. Indeed, more and more believers in the Lord, large numbers of both men and women were added to the church. As a result, they would even bring the sick out into the main streets and lay them on cots and mats so that at least Peter's shadow would fall on some of them as he passed by. Even large numbers of persons from towns around Jerusalem would gather, bringing the sick and those harassed by unclean spirits. Everyone was healed. The high priest, together with his allies, the Sadducees, was overcome with jealousy. They seized the apostles and made a public show of putting them in prison. An angel from the Lord opened the the prison doors during the night and led them out. The angel told them, go, take your place in the temple and tell the people everything about this new life. Early in the morning, they went into the temple and as they had been told and began to teach. When the high priest and and his colleagues gathered, they convened the the Jerusalem council, that is, the full assembly of Israel's elders, they sent word to the prison to have the apostles brought before them. However, the guards didn't find them in the prison. They returned and reported. We found the prison locked and well secured with guards standing at the doors, but when we opened the doors, we found no one inside. When they received this news, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were baffled and wondered what might be happening. Just then, someone arrived and announced, Look, the people you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching people. Then the captain left with his guards and brought the apostles back. They didn't use force because they were afraid the people would stone them. 
the apostles were brought before the council where the high priest confronted them. In no uncertain terms, we demanded that you not teach in this name, and look at you. You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to hold us responsible for this man's death. Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than humans. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God has exalted Jesus to His right side as leader and Savior so that He could enable Israel to change its heart and life and to find forgiveness for sin. We are witnesses of such things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. When the council members heard this, they became furious and wanted to kill the apostles. One council member, a Pharisee and a teacher of the law named Gamaliel, well respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the man be take, that the men be taken out taken outside for a few moments. He said, "Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you intend to do to these people." Some time ago, Thutis appeared, claiming to be somebody, and some four hundred men joined him. After he was killed, all of his followers scattered, and nothing came of that. Afterward, at the same, same time, at the time of the census, Judas the Galilean appeared and got some people to follow him in a revolt. He was killed too, and all of his followers scattered far and wide. Here's my recommendation. In this case, distance yourself from these men. Let them go. If their plan or activity is of human origin, it will end in ruin. If it originates with God, you won't be able to stop them. Instead, you would actually find yourselves fighting God. The council was convinced by his reasoning. After calling the apostles back, they had them beaten. They ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, then let them go. The apostles left the council rejoicing because they had been regarded as worthy to suffer disgrace for the sake of the name. Every day they continued to teach and proclaim the good news that Jesus is the Christ both in the temple and in houses. Uh, The word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. Um, So before we we get too far, um, in in our world, in our culture, in our life, we have to declare something. First, and foremost, this is maybe even, even from within me to say, um, to believe the story of Jesus, to, to believe in who He is, who He was, is to believe in the miraculous. Uh, he, he did miraculous things, right? Ar- arguments, right? But not only that, the very fact that we declare Him having resurrected from the dead, that we have to declare the miraculous. Oh, our culture, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll admit, I don't want to go too far with this today, uh, but I'll admit there's, there's probably challenge here within us, my guess is, about um, the possibility of the miraculous, right? We see on TV faith healers and things that get a little out of control and we kind of wonder what's going on there. And, and then on the other side, we might find people that are like, well, no, mirac- miracles don't happen. It can't be proven, right? It's not science or whatever the case may be. And there's this, this polarizing sense about culture, which is maybe becoming all too familiar to us, this idea of polarization. This idea that, that, that if we maybe disagree with each other on something, then we must be enemies and hate each other, or whatever the case may be, right? We, we live in this space that is just a real challenge to navigate. Uh, but I want us to think about this morning how it is that, that, that the truth and story of Jesus um, falls not in the middle of two polars, transcends two polars. 
Does, does this make sense? I, I want to be careful to say, you know, that, that if, 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 we're, if we're talking politics, you're either right or left, but no, Jesus is in the middle. And I want to say, well, uh, I want to be careful with that because, because the truth of God, the truth of Jesus transcends our binary, our polar. So that, that's kind of where I want to start today. Uh, with that, I want us to think of another story that, that was a miraculous story in Scripture. And this is the feeding of the 5,000. You remember this story. People followed Jesus and His disciples out away from town to, to hear His teaching. Life got a little away from them. Time kind of passed. And, you know, they're out there and thinking, oh my goodness, it's almost dinner time. No wonder, no wonder my belly's grumbling. I, it's time for food, you know. And the disciples are like, hey, Jesus, you know, these people are hungry. You might want to send them away and, and give them food, you know. And, uh, we don't really have anything, and by anything, they meant we don't have enough for everybody, a little bit. He says, well, g- give me what you have, and he blesses it, and, and they begin to pass it out, and, and, and there's an abundance. There's this overabundance, 12 extra basketfuls, right? There's this abundance that happens in the story. The miraculous. Some, some might hold it as, you know, a magic trick. You know, Jesus pulled a bunny out of his hat or whatever. And, and, and I, don't, I don't mean to, to be sarcastic with this at all. Don't, don't hear this in, in this tone. Um, but that may be so. It, it may be indeed. And that's the way I was raised to, to hear the story and understand. And I'm not going to argue that sentiment. Uh, but I want us to think about two angles. That angle where Jesus simply created out of nothing, or out of very little anyways, an an abundance of. Uh, But there's some scholars that would argue it this way. That when when Jesus prayed, when Jesus blessed the food, and when that move, that, that, that sentiment of generosity happened, they said, hey, we have a little. I don't know how far it'll go, but I'll give you what I have. That, that, that sentiment was kind of a domino effect around the, the people, around the crowd. So, for instance, I mean, imagine it for you. Imagine you're, you're in a crowd of people. People are getting hungry. You've got enough for you and your family to have a little bit. And you think, oh man, if I let anybody know that I have a little food, then we all might get a crumb and we're all going to be hungry. So I'll protect myself and my family. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm here. I've, I've, got, I've got mine. I've got what I need. And I'm going to settle, settle in. But the, some scholars would, would argue that, that when, when the faith, something little, is offered, then it begats more life. It, it gives birth more generosity, where, where, where generosity begats generosity, begats generosity, get, gives birth to, if you don't, begats, it's kind of an interesting word, right? That's a, a little bit of an of a old King James maybe kind of language. But this idea that, that a little generosity goes a long way. And so pretty soon everybody's going, oh, yeah, I have a little bit, I have a little bit, I have a little bit. And out of everybody's little bit that is not enough on its own, there's an overabundance. And scholars that would lean that way would say this becomes the miraculous. The miraculous is that humanity was generous. generous. The miraculous is that people actually jumped on that generosity train. But when the community comes together, there's life given. When the community says, hey, 
I've got this, then life begins to flourish. And I would argue that in the book of Acts and in these moments where we read of read of, of the miraculous, of healing, I would I I don't want to I don't want to say that people were not physically healed. I believe they were, and I believe they are. But what I want to add to that is that it is in the abundance of community coming together in love and generosity and goodness that life begins to happen, or maybe that life does happen. This is the grand story of the book of Acts that that, that Luke writes both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. And Luke, he's a a doctor, and he talks a lot through both books about healings and about economics. And I I think as as we're to perceive today in our culture and our world, those 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 are two things that might consume us. Our health concerns, health insurance and whatnot, how are we going to pay for it if we get sick? Which is wrapped up in the economic of it, right? Uh, Two major concerns. I would would argue that in the first century, that probably was their concerns as well, Uh, that they would would live in this tension. if, If I'm sick, will I even be able to be a part of the community? If I'm sick, will I be cared for? Economics and health. It's easy for us to be consumed by these things. To be overcome by what's going to happen next. I'm going to say that in the the book of Acts, which by its original name would be Acts of the Holy Spirit, I would say that the Acts of the Holy Spirit, when consuming a people, health and wholeness begin to take place. But here's another part of the story I I want us to grapple with a little bit, and that is the invitation to participate. Oh, there's moments. There's moments where the the miraculous kind of just happens. There's moments. There there was not a, a whole lot we could have participated in in the miraculous or the miracle that happened in our youngest son. If you haven't heard that story, we can talk later. But in utero, he was in trouble. The doctors didn't suspect he would make it. Clearly, they were, they were wrong. Hey, your pastor, I have a scar on my chest. When I was born, I had holes in my lungs, and 40, almost 46 years ago, a month premature and holes in your lungs was a lot bigger of a deal than it is now. And the doctors put me in a little thing and said, flip a coin, he'll either make it or he won't. They tried to do some surgeries and stitch me up, and my lung tissue was too soft, they couldn't do it, and so it... It was one way or the other. It was a coin toss. There wasn't much that I could have participated in in that moment. Mm -mm. So don't hear me say that our doing creates the miraculous. But I want to stand alongside James and say that our faith is actionable. It's a, it's a movement for all of us. And if we're to understand the book of Acts well, I think we're to understand the book of Acts is this, this dissension of the Spirit on these people 
and they having been captivated by it. <laughs> Them having been so wrapped up in, whoa, the miraculous has happened. And so there is this motivation and desire to even catch the shadow of Peter. This is, the, this is the language I have for us when I say in the midst of these challenging days, will we lean all the more into God's story? Understand the desire to put your head in the sand. I'll be, I'll be honest, Sunday afternoons is when, I, when you might find me head down, you know? <laughs> but that's, that's not the invitation. The, the, the invitation is, is a boldness of God's grace at work in us that compels us to the miraculous. May, may we be a people. May we be a people that are, that are captivated by the Spirit of God that is at work in the world. May we be a people that are watching and looking, keeping our lamps lit. You might be able to find all kinds of gospel literature that speaks this story. That we would find ourselves looking out God's work, not only out there, but in here as well, that God wants to do a work in us. That God wants to heal us. Whether we're physically sick or whether we're just feeling the weight of the world, God wants to heal us. And by way of His Spirit, He brings wholeness and health and healing. So, so may we be a people. We be a people so caught up by the Spirit of God in this world that we can't help but lean in all the more. Grace, love, His mercy that brings life to all. Amen? Come with me. You are able to. God in heaven, I pray again, health and healing to the sick. And God, in the midst of that prayer, I pray, God, that we would participate in the health and the healing of those who are sick. And God, that we would see your activity. Would we see your mercy and your grace, healing those around us and ourselves. So God, whether our sickness is relational or physical, God, I pray healing over us. Whether our marriages are in trouble, our, our relationship with our kids are in trouble, God, I pray your healing touch for us. That people from all around might see your work and your goodness. God, may we be your people today, caught up in your spirit. May we know love and grace in us and directed over us in this life. Amen. Go in his peace.